The Whetstone High Speed Morse Telegraph System has three machines in it. I made a video last time showing the perforator and the transmitter. This time I'm looking at the receiver which is said to be able to receive and print Morse at a thousand letters a minute or 200 words a minute. I like the inkwell on this machine which is very easy to get at and to clean. Some other inkers have very complicated inkwells full of nooks and crannies and very messy to operate. There's a wheel that dips into the inkwell and above it one slightly set to the side which transfers the ink to the paper slip. The armature that moves the print wheel is very lightweight. I think it's designed along the same principle as a telegraph relay. It only moves a very short distance as you will see down below there are two contacts that the tongue of the armature operates between and on the right is the space and on the left is the mark. When the current is off it returns to the right thus removing the print wheel from this paper slip. The contacts are there to activate a sounder but I don't have one connected so at the moment they just act as stops for the armature. You can see the little print wheel move to the left as I push the tongue to the left. The paper slip passes through a sort of chicane of two iron posts which holds it in a very firm position for the printer head to get at. That's running at quite high speed but the machine has an adjustable speed to economise on tape when printing slow messages with relatively long dots and dashes. Speed adjustment is through an infinitely variable gearbox. That consists of two wheels at right angles and when the nearest one slides to the left it drives the inner one slower. This makes the machine run faster because the inner wheel is turning a set of rotating vanes called the fly. The slower it goes the less air resistance it has to overcome. The vanes unfold at higher speed as well increasing the resistance. I've connected it back to back with the Whetstone transmitter which has got on it a, a loop of tape which has the word Paris coded into it several times. The transmitter has a 6 volt motor with its own internal battery and there's also a 9 volt dry battery to energise the telegraph circuit connecting the two. Last time I didn't give you a long enough shot of the transmitter which is I think an awesome device. It's claimed to have a top speed of 500 letters per minute which is only half the claimed top speed of the receiver so I don't know what was supposed to drive the receiver at a thousand letters a minute. With my little 6 volt motor the transmitter runs at 300 letters per minute which means the length of a dot is 20 milliseconds which I think is pretty amazing. So here it goes driving the receiver at 300 letters per minute. It didn't have any trouble with that. You can see the RIS of Paris there. To drive it at a thousand letters a minute I need to transmit from the computer. But first I'll demonstrate the inking mechanism at only a hundred letters per minute. The little wheel has to be all but touching the big wheel. As you can see their edges are going in opposite directions. And watch how the little wheel pushes up a wave in front of it and skims the ink off the big wheel by surface tension. Only a professor of physics could have thought of that. So let's see what happens at its top speed of a thousand letters per minute. I'll turn the sounder on halfway through so you can see what it sounds like. So 
So did it work? Yes, I claim that's a satisfactory result. That says Paris, all right. On the P of the subsequent word, you can see it's had some trouble separating the last dot from the second dash. I'm not going to adjust it and pray to it any more to try and get it perfect. I'm sure that the humans who read these tapes could cope with a bit of uncertainty. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. And if you've got time, have a look at my 200th birthday movies about Florence Nightingale and other Victorian genius, like Professor Wetstone. I mean Wheatstone.